The Syrians right now are trying to act like this attack was never going to happen, that these ships were never going to come up here and start launching cruise missiles at Syria. But they're also getting ready for just that thing. And one of the things that has happened along that front is that these Russian ships have arrived here. Why does this latest ship make such a difference? Yeah, they brought in a, uh, an electronic reconnaissance platform, state of the art. It's got the variety of sensors. It's got the ability to monitor uh, the electronics, the communications. Uh, it has its own radar, its own sonar. So it's, it's got a really good capability to track uh, the U.S. vessels as they move around the Mediterranean. It also has a capability to, to monitor and uh, warn of the launch. So, the so this could be happening, in fact, hundreds of miles offshore here, and this Russian ship could know the moment a cruise missile left, what does it do with that information? Well, not only uh, when the cruise missile leaves, uh, it might also know as they run up to the launch. So they got hours possibly of warning time. One or two uh, hours. So one, they, could, they could let the Syrians know that far ahead of time. And you have to assume that they've set up some sort of an early warning net with the Syrians. So that information is going to go right to Syrian Air Defense Headquarters in Damascus. Well, let's talk about cruise missiles for a minute here. Cruise missiles are extraordinary weapons. They're very reliable. They have pinpoint accuracy. They can carry 1,000 pound warheads. And we might be talking about 100, 200, 300 of them being launched. Against that kind of power, what difference does it make if Syria knows one or two hours ahead of time? Well, not only do they know one or two hours ahead of time to launch, they will have had 10 days in which to prepare for this. So what they're doing right now is moving things out of where we think they are, hoping that we will not detect the movement of where they're going. So uh, they're hoping that those missiles are going to be, to be striking empty targets. Now, the Syrians have been moving their high-value assets, the SCUDs, the chemical weapons launchers, uh, aircraft, command and control, and they've also been moving a lot of their security and intelligence assets out of their offices and into school buildings. So into civilian targets that are going to be very hard for us to hit. Politically, you Politically, can't. Yes. very difficult yeah. to take a risk on. But, but let's get back to the issue of the intelligence coming out of here. We know that the Syrian government does not want to give a lot of information out. We know that there are insurgent groups out there, but the insurgent groups aren't just one group. They are dozens or maybe hundreds, including some terrorist groups. In that environment, as each day passes, in, this, in these terms, how can we rely on any of that? Yeah, as all this information floods in, you have to vet uh, and determine which is valid. And it's very difficult because a lot of these insurgent groups, these, these uh, uh, fighters, have an interest in us striking particular targets. So they're going to make that target sound like it's hiding a high-value asset we put a, uh, so we can put a weapon on it. And all of that, Jake, is what is complicating this process because ultimately, if a missile launches, it has to land somewhere, and that means picking a target in this changing and difficult environment.